In this lesson, we'll continue our view of reading test eight, section one. We're now on the second passage out of five. This is the social science passage. This is adapted from Jeffrey Mervis, Why Null Results Rarely See the Light of Day, published in 2013 by the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And I assume you've read this. Right away in the beginning, it describes the question of what to do with null results. And then we have the definition in this non-essential clause, when researchers fail to see an effect that should be detectable, has long been hotly debated among those conducting medical trials where the results can have a big impact on lives and corporate bottom lines. And so this passage, really, it's explaining what to do with these null results. And it was really saying that the standard practice when we had, when scientists have these null results, right, they had, let's say, a hypothesis, they conduct an experiment, and then the data doesn't confirm the hypothesis, that's called a null result, and they just toss it out. And so this is really discussing, like, is this a good practice of just tossing it out? Because in, there is evidence listed later in the passage where it's misleading, and sometimes the scientists might only use the, the part of the data that did confirm. It might be redundant. And at the end of the passage, the author suggested a solution that a registry of data generated by all experiments, right, including the null results, would address these problems. It would include a pre-analysis plan that is detailed description of what scientists hope to achieve and how the data will be analyzed, and it would deter or dissuade researchers from tweaking their analyses after data are collected in search of more publishable results. And there was also a graph here as well. And so again, I assume you've read it. It really benefits if you if, don't just watch these videos, read the passage and try to answer them and then watch this, the solutions afterwards. All right, question 11. The passage primarily serves to, this is a primary purpose or a general question. We, typically, I recommend skipping these, coming back, because if you don't understand the full passage, it's hard to answer a broad general question. It's better to do the specific questions and then come back to this. We're just going to do this in order now, but uh, I do recommend that, especially if you have any trouble answering the general questions. All right, so does this whole passage discuss recent findings concerning scientific studies and dispute a widely held belief about the publication of social science research? This is not accurate. does not dispute a widely held belief, right? And findings concerning scientific studies. I mean, that's partly right, but this there's definitely not a dispute of a widely held belief. B, explain a common practice in the reporting of research studies and summarize a study that provides support for a change to this practice. This is correct. And you see how broad this answer is. There's no mention of no results. The common practice, that's the standard practice of not reporting no results. And then at the end, right, a solution was proposed to have that registry for all the experiments. And that's the summary for a study for change. Again, really broad language when you answer these general questions. The answer is B. It looks like 12 and 13 are both word in context. So we're always going to look at the word, try to predict it, and then return to see if your answer matches. And especially with allow and strength, these are pretty common, easy words. It's going to be usually the secondary meaning of the word. So 21, we're looking for what allows means in the context of the passage. All right, so time sharing experiments for the social sciences, TESS, allows scientists to order up internet-based surveys of a representative sample of US adults to test a particular hypothesis. So it allows, in this case, you should recognize it, it gives the ability, right? Gives the ability, that's really the prediction. So let's see which one is closest to that. Admits, tolerates, grants, it's definitely enables, right? It gives the ability, it allows them to do that. And so D for this one. Now let's take a look and see what strength means in line 43. Again, we're going to try to predict it. Not unexpectedly, the statistical strength of the findings made a huge difference in whether they were ever published. And this relates to the graph as well, the strength, and you see these strong results. And so the strength of the findings, that's really sort of like how closely related they were to the, to the hypothesis, how strong the results are, how important, I suppose. It's hard to predict this one, but I think you know what, what word you're looking for, right? Attribution, to attribute means to give credit. This is not giving credit, right? The strength of the data is really how strong it is, without, but I'm using the same word. It's not exertion, right? This is sort of like physical exertion to expend energy. It's not toughness. It's significance, right? How significant the data is, how strong it is, 
how accurate it is. So it's D for that one. And let's see, we'll do two more questions in the video. And notice two part question. You typically see two of these in most passages. So we're going to always look for the look for the range, find the evidence independently, and then f find the answer for the first question. The passage indicates that a problem with failing to document null results. So you've got to read it carefully. We want evidence failing to document null results. We want a problem with that. We know it's bound between 38, that's the beginning of the range, and 62. So we're going to skim through and we're looking for a failing, a problem for failing to document 38 to 62. All right, so here, 38, their answers suggest to Maholtra that we're rescuing findings from the file draw will, will require a shift. Okay, so this is just talking about what needs to be done. Do we have any evidence of a problem failing to report? We don't have it here. I'm going to keep going now over on this column. And this gives sort of the summary of the data, these different percentages. Again, no evidence, problem failing to report, not involved in the study plate crit praise its clever design, still no evidence. All right, so let's keep looking. Remember the range ends at 62, so it's probably down here. He and others note that the bias against null studies can waste time and money. Okay, so here's sort of a negative, but again, we want evidence failing to report. We don't have it yet. Worse if researchers publish significant results from similar experiments in the future, they could look stronger than they should because the earlier stages are ignored. So they kind of split this up, but they're saying that they only publish the strong significance results and they ignore the null study. So this is failing to publish. This is what I mean. If you just sort of have tunnel vision, you just have to say, I'm looking, failing to report. It really makes it much easier. And so we know it's here, failing to report, and we know that the answer is going to be related to that it makes the significant results stronger than they should because of omitting the null results. And so let's take a look. We know it's going to be 59 to 62. All right. And what's the problem? The results of related studies will be misleading. This is correct, right? Again, it's sort of broad general language. They don't state that the published results will seem stronger. They just say misleading, but this is still a true statement. So the answer, D for 15 and A for 14.